So in the last lesson, we took some time in Blender and created a set of seven world blocks. Each one of these blocks has two textures on it, a simple purple material and a bumpy material that we created using a normal map. Each one of these blocks is actually a set of two different blocks. The purple block, which we're going to see with the material and the texture on the top of it, but also if I expand this short block out over here in my outliner, there is a second block which is my collision only block, which is why we're seeing two overlapping in a not very pleasant way on my screen right now. If I hide that collision only block, we can see the way it looks. And if I hide the actual block and show the collision block, it's a simpler version, lower poly version, without any of the confusing diagonal edges that we don't want for a collision shape inside of Godot. So we've got this file set up. We did this in the last lesson. At the end of the last lesson, we exported using file and export and then we export it as a gltf file of course and we export it directly into our project folder so if i now go back into godot we can see that i have in my assets folder in my file system doc there is a file called world blocks version 1.glb which is what we exported and when we export it into our project folder it also put the two png images that make up the top bumpy texture of our blocks. So in this lesson, we're gonna take those blocks and we're gonna replace our ground. We're gonna get rid of our ground. And instead, we're gonna use what's called a grid map. A grid map is a node in Godot, which lets you essentially paint a world out of whatever blocks that you like. But first, we're gonna take this blocks scene that we imported and create what's called a mesh library. Once you have a grid map set up properly with a mesh library, it's an extremely fast and fun process to draw out your level, so this lesson won't be too long. Let's go ahead and jump in. What I'm going to start off by doing, of course, is selecting my floor, which is right here. Its children are evident in this scene itself. We don't have a separate scene instance to create a floor. It's all just right here. And I'm going to right click on my root node of the floor, the floor itself, and say delete nodes with its children. So I'll press OK. The floor is gone. I'm going to replace it by going up to my level one root node, and then I'll press the plus button, and I'm going to search for a grid map. I'll go ahead and double click on it to add it into my scene right here. And once I have it in my world, you're going to notice that in your 3D viewport, you can see an orange grid of essentially squares or tiles. This is where you're going to paint your grid floor. And yes, you can paint in three dimensions. So you can paint a floor, you can go up and down, you can paint a whole 3D world full of blocks wherever you want in three dimensions. What we have to do though, is with our grid map selected, is go over to its properties in the inspector and give it a mesh library. A mesh library is essentially a collection of objects that you want to act as the tiles in a palette in this little panel over here that you can choose which one you want to paint with and then simply click and drag and paint with it. How do you make a mesh library? Well, we have that imported GLTF or GLB file that we just exported from Blender at the end of the last lesson. What I'm going to do is right click on that GLB file and say new inherited scene. If we actually want to take the GLTF file and open it up as a Godot scene, that's what we do. Right click new inherited scene. When I do that, a new tab will open and we can see all of our blocks. If you named everything properly, in other words, you gave every shape a name and you gave every collision object the name dash colon only or collision only in Blender as we did in the last lesson, then you should see pretty much what I have here. You should see the actual textured mesh for each block, and you should also see a faint outline in wireframe of its simpler collision shape, which mine seems to work pretty well. There it is. What I need to do now is go and save this scene, not as a normal TSCN file, but I'm going to go up to the scene menu and say export as mesh library. That's the format that a grid map will need to have in order for us to bring it into that grid map and use each tile as, well, something that we can paint with. So I'll go up to the scene menu and export as mesh library, and I'm going to save this mesh library into my resources folder. A mesh library is a Godot resource after all. And I'm going to call this uh, world blocks version one, 
and I'll press save. And when I do that, I can go back to my level one scene. And with my grid map selected, I'll go to the mesh library in the inspector and I'm going to bring in, I'll quick load that mesh library. It'll show me only appropriate files when I go to quick load and not all of my files to choose from. So the only mesh library I have is called worldblocksv1.tres. I'll simply double click on that to open it. And hey, look, we have a palette which shows all of the blocks from our GLB file. If I go ahead and select a block, you can see that one shows up in my scene. And when I hover my mouse over my 3D viewport, they'll snap nicely to those tiles, those orange squares in the grid floor. To paint, I simply click and I place a block. If I click and hold, I can paint a bunch at the same time. Now, if you didn't follow along exactly with me and you made blocks of different shapes and sizes, you can, with the grid map selected, go over to the inspector and change properties about the grid map. Like if I go into the cell section, I can change the cell sizes. So if I don't have cubes that are two by two by two, and that's what I base all of these different blocks on, you can change those sizes here. You can turn off centering for all of the blocks. So if I don't want these blocks to be centered like they are in each square, I can turn different properties off and you can see that, well, they all shift a little bit. So depending on the orientation that you want each one to be in, you can turn these off and on as you see fit. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave everything here the way it was with the exception of my added mesh library, of course. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually just right click to erase, right click and hold down to erase blocks. And of course, left click the normal click to paint blocks. But what I'm gonna do is not paint on the current level, the current floor level, because if you look, if I orbit around and pan over, this level is too high up. I want to paint one level lower down. So what I can do is go up to this floor value, which is zero and move one level down to negative one. You'll see that when I hover my mouse over the 3D viewport to paint, that my grid is now a couple of steps or units lower. So now when I paint blocks, it's appropriately below the character. Okay, so now what I'll simply do is orbit around to some sort of a top view and I can simply paint like this to paint a floor. I've gone ahead and erased that floor because I wanna show you that you can quickly draw a floor by holding shift down on your keyboard and then clicking and dragging a rectangle, which is basically a selection area. And then if you go up to this word that says grid map, this is actually a menu. It's not very obvious, but if you click on this word grid map with a little icon, you get a menu of things that you can do. And you can see that down here, there is a selection area where you can fill a current selection. That's what we have right now. That selection box is a selection area and we can simply fill that in really, really quick. We can also hold shift and drag to create a selection and we can erase everything in that selection area to quickly clear out an area of our game level. So I'll go up to grid map and I'll select clear selection. If I have a section of platforms drawn and I wanna move that whole area at the same time, what I can do is I can select that area. So I'll hold shift and select that area and then I can go up to grid map and say cut selection. And then I can simply move that selection around. And so I will click right there to move my floor. There we go. What I'm gonna do now is select my grid map to bring up that side palette again. And I'm gonna use a different block this time. I'm gonna paint some walls. So if I grab my block wall and I wanna paint with it, you'll notice that for some of the sides of this floor, the wall is on the correct side. So I can go ahead and paint uh, these ones, if I want to rotate a tile, well, I can use my A, S, and D keys on my keyboard to rotate. The letter A will rotate in one axis, the letter S in another. So I think I found the way that I want to rotate and the letter D will rotate in another axis. So it just takes some time to get used to which letter A, S, or D rotates in which axis. You'll get used to it pretty quick. I'll go ahead and zoom out and paint these little walls there and I'll keep going. I'll press S on my keyboard a few times to rotate. And by the way, shift S will rotate in one direction and then S will rotate in the opposite. So clockwise and counterclockwise. There we go. I'll go ahead and paint these sides and I'll orbit around and I'll tap shift S 
and then I'll paint over here very quickly. The same is true with my corner piece. I'll select the corner piece. I'll tap S, click, and there we go. I'll tap S, click, S, click, and S, click. There we go. I've got a little floor. Does it work? I'll press Control S to save, and I'll go up and press Play Scene, and this will be our test to see if the collision shapes actually work, and they do. My character landed on the floor, and the blocks did as well, and so I can press my arrow keys to move around, and of course, I can spacebar to jump. There we go. Let's create some ramps now. So I'm going to actually make a couple of these wall block tiles, just a normal blocks, because I'm going to make them into where a ramp starts. So I don't want there to be a wall right here. And I'm going to paint the lower part of a ramp. So I'm going to go up one level. And now I can paint if I rotate the block like that. And then I'll select the ramp top and I'll paint with those. You can see what this process is going to look like. I'm going to speed this next part of the video up and paint a few different extensions off of my main home base ground floor. Okay, so I've gone ahead and painted a fairly simple level. I'm going to later on in this course show you how to create a moving platform or two. So I've created a separate little island over here that you can't get to unless you, well, hop on a moving platform that will go back and forth. Just a few last things to finish off this lesson, and that is if you get tired manually moving this floor number up and down, in other words, you want to paint above or below where you currently are, you can simply hold the control key on your keyboard and scroll up and down while you hold that control key on your keyboard. You can see I'm scrolling with the control key up on my mouse wheel and then with control down on the mouse wheel to move that number up and down so I can paint higher up or lower down. It's really quick to do. Uh, what I can also do is paint not only on a flat surface like on a floor, but if I want to quickly paint up and down, I can change under this grid map menu uh, from editing the Y axis where every floor represents a flat floor on the ground, but each floor would be going up and down on that up and down Y axis. I can change that to say be on the X axis with this edit X axis option. And when I do that, the floors get tilted sideways and up and down floors mean on the X axis side to side. So if I want to very quickly paint, you know, blocks that I have to jump up onto above each other, that would be an easy way. If I change my floors to be on the Z axis, well, that would be in the opposite direction. So if I want to make some platforms that I'll go ahead and control uh, scroll to scroll down a couple of times here, I could make blocks side by side very easily like that. If I wanted, I'll go ahead and erase those and erase those because I don't actually want them in my level, but that's what you could do. I'll switch it back to edit Y axis, which is the default. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see if everything looks right. I've noticed here that my camera is facing in the wrong direction. I actually want basically our view to be from my current viewport view, which means that when I go up and press play scene, uh, you can see that we're looking at the level from the opposite direction. I'm going down this ramp here that should be well from this angle from the front we should be looking at the ramp so i'm actually going to take my character my steve character and rotate him on the y-axis 180 degrees i'll use the rotate gizmo here and hold control and rotate him 180 degrees so now the little camera target will be up there and so now if i press control s to save and i press play scene now we'll see the game level from the right direction. And so I can go ahead and explore my little world. Here it is. You'll notice that when my character goes up and down ramps, he doesn't turn or tilt so that his bottom stays flat on the ground as he's moving up and down a tilted surface. Uh, we'll fix that in the next lesson. 
but it's looking pretty good. Does he jump high enough to reach that platform? No, he doesn't. We'll fix that in a later lesson, but here it is. I can jump up onto higher platforms. I move my coin so I can still collect it there. I can move down a ramp. I can climb stairs. Well, I can't actually climb up them yet, but let's go ahead and explore what we have. It's looking pretty good to me. So I think we'll call that it for this lesson. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.